So peeps, we know that the debate um, surrounding needs is on in earnest and many persons are voicing their opinions and concerns. We see now where Prime Minister Andrew Wallace has taken step to correct um, something in his head that is out in the public. Um, he said someone spliced a video from a youth town hall to mislead you and give the impression that I disrespected a young man who asked about needs. This is not so. Please see the full exchange. We must be careful of those who will use dishonesty to achieve their narrow political objectives. Read for yourself, do your own research and get full clips. Be careful of what and who you trust on social media. So I will play the video clip and you will decide for yourselves whether or not Prime Minister and Jewelness would have responded to this young man in a way that would have been disrespectful. You will be the judge. Good night everyone. My name is Daniel Thomas. I'm the president of the Love March Movement, which is a youth organization. And we have an initiative called Colorblind, which is where we encourage young people to be engaged in political and national matters with an unbiased eye, with, without political um, assignment or you know, alignment, rather. OK, so my issue that I would like to raise um, at this time is with respect to um, needs all right no I am not and we are not against the national ID we see the benefit of it they are great pros it will fill gaps in the country but we believe that in its current form it poses significant issues for many Jamaicans um, especially with the fact that there has not been in in my opinion and many other Jamaican 60,000 I checked the petition this morning 60,000 Jamaicans here and abroad who feel that there needs to be more consultation ventilation of the issues speaking about speaking about pros and cons all right both of them are important to our consultative process um, so we're being told that we must enroll in needs during the next three years we'll be um, possibly fine a max of a hundred thousand dollars and um, barred from government services and possibly private services as well the only exception being where there's a threat to health or life or a state of national emergency now I'm deeply concerned about this bill because of the impact on the country so, um, so Charles so you, you have given us two points in the bill that you'd like um, responded to. Well, I can't Sarah go into Thurr? all of them, but just to say, right now uh -huh. I qualify for NHT. Yes. In three years, I will somehow lose my qualification. Because, and, I mean, somebody can respond to the NHT points, of course. You're sure about that? Well, that is my understanding because it won't be a threat to well, my this, this life is where or you, health. This is, this is where you're going to come to get all the answers. All right. Right, so allow them to respond now. Thanks, Charles. Really so appreciate it. With, we have over 60,000 Jamaicans. Um, so Charles, and, uh, Charles, so we have to Thomas, allow them to respond. Me? Yeah, I'm I am sorry. Thomas, sorry. I'm so sorry. My Thomas, Thomas, my apologies. Can I just I finish the, the last name. two lines here? The last it's two lines. Very quick. Uh, two points or lines? Two lines. So my, my closing thought would be to allow, to withdraw the bill, allow for proper ventilation of the issues over a three-month period even, town hall meetings and joint select committee where we can properly speak about the many many issues that are in the bill we're not against thank the bill, you but we are for the country of jamaica moving forward thanks well, thomas I tell you what, excellent um, thomas thomas yes I'm, I'm very happy that we find common ground being that we are both for the country moving forward but i just wanted to know can you now get your nhd benefit without providing identification i just wanted to know and the answer is no, no, you can't. Secondly, 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 and let's be clear, uh, let's be clear. Hang on, Thomas, you don't get a second chance. So sorry, you already asked. You, you it's your rhetorical. Question. No, you already asked. Oh, it was I'm rhetorical. Sorry. Okay, okay, fine. Like many other things, it's rhetorical. Fine, fine. Secondly, Thomas, do you know, how old are you, Thomas? I am 26. Do you know that this bill this idea of creating a national registry started from as early as 1970. 
and we have been discussing this national ID morphed from having the a birth certificate that's unique, starting with ID for voting, which by now, most Jamaicans who don't intend to vote, but who want some identification, decides that, well, we will take the voter ID, but we won't vote. I'll give my fingerprint for the voter ID but I don't vote. There are 1.8 million Jamaicans who want an ID, and they give their fingerprint willingly, including some of the 60,000 who signed the petition. Yeah. Answering personal questions. <laughs> providing personal information, and freely giving of their biometric. The government has that now. What's new? You talk about consultation and speaking about this bill. In 2002, this bill was brought to the Parliament of Jamaica by the then Minister of Health, John Jr. It was tabled in Parliament and a joint select committee was named it sat and languished and nothing happened. In 2009, former Prime Minister Bruce Bowling saw that the bill was there, it's, nothing is happening with it, started a, a, a resurrection of it. In 2012, former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller took the bill and her very statements, this is a very important thing and we are going to push it, and started the negotiation for a loan to do this with the IDB. It was good for them to start the conversation about a $64 million loan. But no, it is not good. You know what I reject? Do you know what I reject? I reject the view that somehow you have a higher moral authority on this matter than I do. If I am not here to create, and I make that point very seriously, because I am not here to create a system that is going to deprive Jamaicans of their freedom. And you know what else? But the bill I does. Am not, I am not hiding from consultation. I am here facing the questions. Unlike most, I am facing the questions and answering them. And I will go to every church in Jamaica. I will go to every room, every house, and I will answer them. Because I am not trying to take away anybody's rights. And I find that this discussion is disingenuous, unfair, and untruthful. And I will tell you, Jamaica, I am not going to hide from this. If you say, if you say that you are for Jamaica and that you agree that we should have a national civil registry, then let us talk as we are doing, but let us talk on the facts of the situation, not on the untruth and what we make up. Let us discuss the facts. All right. So this was the reaction of another young man who was not appreciative of how the Prime Minister responded to the first young man who questioned about needs. <laughs> okay, good night, everyone. Uh, my name is Glendon Martin. I am a student of the University of Technology. And I had a question, but the president had, uh, had a similar question, so I'll allow him to ask the question. But what I have to say, well, I have a comment, actually. The gentleman that asked the question on NIDS, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I was taken aback by the way you responded to the question. I felt that you came across too strong, and it 
when I was listening to you, while I was listening to you, I was Hold saying, on, should I go and ask this gentleman a question? Will he answer me in the same tone that he answered the young man? And I, what I want to, to say and what I want to see in Jamaica or overall with politics is that our politicians behave sometimes, even in parliament, when you see them jumping over, arguing with each other. Our young people are looking at this and they're saying this is something that is right because the politicians, the leaders of our country, this is something that they do. So Mr. Prime Minister, I would like for you to, first of all, apologize on the way you responded to the question. And secondly, allow me to finish, please. Allow me to finish, please. So, As so, of our so, so, my, my, my darling, hang on one second, sir, sir, hold on, everybody, 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 one second, one second. You know, the, the, the great thing about youth, hold on, the great thing about youth is that we see no boundaries at all, none at all. I think that you possibly could think hard on your comment and suggestion, really in terms of the implications. I understand yes, your sir. feeling, but allow the Prime Minister to respond, though, and since you have no quite question. Allow the just, Prime Minister to respond. Just one thing I need to add. To no, you, you've saying. gone past your 30. Well, just to what I was saying, that our, our, our country is seeing some improvement, and that is something I must commend your, your government on doing. But we want to see more and more where young people, the young people voice is being heard, and you can listen and sit and talk with us to hear what we have to say. Thank That's you so I mean. much. Well, look, let me, let me be frank with you, right? Let me be frank with you. I was a young man too. And that's an excellent strategy that you tried to use a while ago. I commend you. Excellent strategy. But I learned one lesson in my political career. Passion. And when you believe in something, you have to stand for it. And you have to speak with passion. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure Thomas knows that it was a very good back and forth response. And you made some points, Thomas, and I made some points. Exactly. And at the end of it, Thomas is going to sit and say, Heal, Prime Minister. And I'm going to say, Heal, Thomas. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Come on now. That is just how debates go. Yes. And, you know, when we are talking and our hands are gesticulating, as long as we remember to be. Respectful, respectful that the person, the personhood should not be violated and that the opinions must be respected. Absolutely. Right? We agree? Thank you so much, Prime Minister. So the Prime Minister has been quick to tell everybody who is willing to listen that he is not the initiator of the National Identification System and it was not a brainchild of his or the Jamaica Labour Party but it was first initiated by the you now opposition People's National Party and it has been languishing in the office of the Prime Minister for decades and he is now seeing uh, the benefits of it and he has decided to fast track its implementation so this is what he had to say in relation to that since my involvement in the bill developed under my watch we did not have a requirement for a compulsory registration it is most disingenuous of the opposition to now no longer support a bill which they were eager to fast track when they were in government and in discussion insist that registration be mandatory any concerned Jamaican can simply do an online search to understand the level of hypocrisy delayed by the opposition, displayed by the opposition, sorry. This bill was already in the office of the Prime Minister from the days of the previous administration. So this is what he had to say about that. Mr. Speaker, before we, I ask for the approval of the amendments. There are two clauses in the bill which seem to have given concern. 
to the public and which I am compelled to take the time to explain. Clause 20 deals with the enrollment of citizens and provides for the fine of $100,000 if one does not comply. Mr. Speaker, since my involvement in the bill and the bill that was developed under my watch, we did not have in that bill a requirement for compulsory registration. We started off from a position that we would seek to get the public to comply by virtue of them seeing the benefits of the bill. It was in discussions with a select team from the opposition that the opposition insisted insisted that it be mandatory. And Mr. Speaker, the hypocrisy that I have had to listen to. But you know, Mr. Speaker, my mother always tells me, hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. Because you know, Mr. Speaker, again the falsehood about this bill not having the benefit of public discourse. In 2000, the then government, which is the opposition now, took a bill to Parliament, carried it to a joint select committee, and in that bill, Mr. Speaker, they had a clause for it to be mandatory. And guess what the fine was? $100,000 at that time. Now, if you, if you brought $100,000 and added interest to it, inflation and everything to bring it up to current dollars it would be a significant amount of, it, of, of, of uh, penalty so it is very disingenuous for the opposition to now come and try to claim a ground that they themselves rejected mr speaker all that any concerned jamaican has to do is just go on the internet or if you store newspapers, go back and you will see that the opposition, the then government, supported the bill, said how necessary it was, no less a person than the former prime minister. The bill, the national identification system, I did not bring that into the office of the prime minister. It was already in the office of the prime minister from the opposition. When you look at the reports from GIS and the, the statements of urgency and importance for the bill to be done, Mr. Speaker, it is disingenuous because it was always the intention of that government there, now the opposition, to introduce and pass this bill. Thank you for watching the video. Drop a like and a comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't done so as yet. Until next time, walk good.